High yield savings accounts or HYSAs have exploded in popularity as a safe place to store and grow your savings. If you already have an HYSA or are considering opening one, you're gonna to wanna to know what you're dealing with. In this video, we'll cover the must know aspects of high yield savings accounts, both the good and the bad. We even cover some cons that nobody else really talks about. Cons that could completely change your opinion on these bank accounts. So make sure to stick around to learn more. Before covering the good and the bad, we first need to understand what HYSAs are and how they work. High level, these are mostly online only bank accounts that typically offer higher APYs versus the traditional brick and mortar banks. For those who may not know, APY stands for annual percentage yield. This is essentially the amount of money or interest you earn in one year considering compound interest. At this point in time, APYs for most competing banks are well above 4%. Whereas with the traditional banks, you'll see rates as low as 0.01 to maybe 0.05%. So you might be wondering, how can these banks offer such competitive APYs? Since these banks are mainly online only, there's very minimal overhead, no need to maintain retail branches, hire bank tellers. So essentially there's just lower expenses versus these traditional banks. Banks make money partially by taking in your deposits and then issuing out loans to different individuals or businesses typically at a higher rate than what they offer you. In the US right now, inflation is a hot topic as the central bank of the US, the Fed, has been raising the federal funds rate to try to combat this widespread inflation. Now this federal funds rate acts as a benchmark for the APYs that banks decide to offer. So federal funds rate is high right now, as are the APYs. There are some popular bank options you've likely heard of, for instance, Marcus by Goldman Sachs, SoFi Checking and Savings, and Ally Bank. Each offering has its own benefits and some shortcomings, and I have a video on that if you're interested, and I'll link above. But now that you understand the key nuances of these bank accounts, you're going to want to hear more about their benefits. First off, they do have relatively high APYs. You earn money simply by depositing your money and then capturing these high percentages and in interest every single month. In my personal life, my parents have been with more traditional banks for their entire lives. So I've recently had them convert to Marcus and SoFi, and they're already seeing the benefits of making much more interest. Regardless of the bank you choose, the institution does take your funds and provide loans, as we mentioned, to other individuals or businesses. So you might as well earn a larger portion for allowing them to use your money. Another benefit are the signup bonuses. I don't recommend chasing credit card bonuses or bank account bonuses for that matter but it can be a good perk if you're already interested in the account. With SoFi right now, you can actually earn up to $250 in a cash bonus once you open your account. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested to learn more. Additionally, there's an affiliate link in the description where you can earn a $25 bonus when using my link. It'll give you that money bonus and also helps this channel grow. Next up, your savings are safe as they are FDIC insured, generally up to $250,000. Now I can't speak for every single HYSA, but anything we review on this channel and generally most of the popular options will offer FDIC insurance. What this means is while extremely unlikely, if any of these banks ever fail, the FDIC will reimburse you up to $250,000 or whatever that amount is. Some banks like SoFi actually offer $2 million in FDIC insurance as they partner with a network of banks. The last benefit we'll cover in this video is that these banks, as mentioned, are online only which means that it's very easy to manage your money on the go. If you're somebody that likes to have web apps or mobile apps on your phone, on your computer, typically the structures, the UIs are very intuitive, very easy to use. You can almost think of these as set it and forget it, bank accounts, take your money, put your savings into these accounts and watch it grow over time. I've had an HYSA for over four years now and I like to keep a bulk of my savings there simply because the APYs are strong, money stays safe, Recently, I was able to purchase a car in cash and it was really helpful to have this significant amount of savings with strong interest every single month. Really made it a lot easier to make this purchase. If you made it this far in the video, make sure to subscribe and leave a like. It really helps out the channel. And now back to the content. Now, as mentioned, HYSAs are not 100% perfect. This channel focuses on transparency, especially when dealing with finances. So you're gonna to wanna to listen closely to these cons. Firstly, the APY you see is variable. When you sign up for your account, you're not locked into 4% or whatever the rate is at the time of signing up. These rates can and will change based on the economic environment. Since the start of the year, these rates have more or less consistently gone up every single month, 
which is reassuring, but back a few years ago, rates were below 1%, depending on the bank you used. From my research and what I've experienced, these rates are always above traditional bank account APYs, but the key takeaway is that the rate you start out with is not guaranteed for the life of your account. HYSAs are savings accounts, so you really can't take your money and immediately convert it to cash. There are some options that offer a debit card like SoFi, checking and savings, as I keep mentioning, but the usual HYSA is really just online only. To actually access your money, you'll have to transfer it from your bank account to another bank account, then spend money from there using your debit card or withdrawing with an ATM. Depending on the bank you choose, there often are a couple business day delays from having the funds transferred from one bank account to another. So the best way to kind of approach this, in my opinion, is have your HYSA for your savings, any short-term savings, for example, and then also have a checking account as kind of your day-to-day -day for withdrawing money and spending money. Next up, a piece that is often overlooked is that you will more than likely have to pay taxes on the interest you earn. I recommend looking into specific tax laws to understand exactly how you'll be impacted. But high level, the IRS considers this interest as taxable income, meaning you will have to pay taxes on the interest you earn. You will keep a majority of the money you make from these HYSA accounts, but keep in mind, when tax season rolls around, you will likely owe some money. As a consumer, it can be a little bit overwhelming with all the various bank options. I was having relationship issues with my old bank, so I broke up with bad banking and moved to SoFi Checking and Savings. Banks have free pens, but Marcus by Goldman Sachs has a high yield savings account. But then again, free pen. Each bank tries to promote a sign up bonus, a higher APY. So it can be really tough, again, as a consumer to pick and choose which bank is right for you. In the long run, a slightly higher APY really just equates to a couple more dollars a month, more than likely. So I recommend going with a bank that you trust, a bank that's reputable. Additionally, you'll want to look into the UI of the web app or mobile app just to make sure it's something that you're comfortable using as you may have this account for the rest of your life. Last but not least, as with all HYSAs, there are alternatives to make more money. The beauty of HYSAs is that they are virtually risk-free so long as you're within the FDIC insurance amounts, but still, there are other ways to make more money. You can invest in the stock market, you can buy properties. With making more money, there's always more risk taken on. So if you're somebody who's risk averse and doesn't want to pick and choose individual stocks or even buy properties, HYSAs remain a great option to store your savings safely. Now you know some of the key pros and cons of HYSAs. Thanks for watching. Let me know of any feedback or questions in the comment section below. If you're ready to learn more about HYSAs, check out this review of the SoFi Checking and Savings account.